Hey, it's Taylor. I wanted to let you know that over the next several months, we're going to be launching a brand new series here on the Deep Game channel, and it's probably going to be a little bit different from what you're used to from us. So I want to let you in on exactly what's happening, but I also want to share um, a more personal reason that I'm doing this because there's a deeper lesson here that I think will benefit you as well. So first things first, you have probably noticed that over the past several months, we haven't been posting our regular long form talks uh, here from that you've probably been used to from Deep Game. And the reason for that is pretty simple. I have been so absorbed in several larger projects here, like um, heading into the office now. For example, we have uh, a new version of our masterclass coming out soon. We have several new programs coming. We have potentially a Deep Game retreat happening this summer, which <laughs> I'm super, super excited about. And with the way that I typically work, um, I tend to get so absorbed in these bigger projects as I'm creating them that it's really hard to break free of that and divert my attention to something else. And so what's happened is that I just haven't been able to do both at once and posting these consistent long form talks uh, that you've been used to is just um, as hard as I've tried, it's just been impossible. So uh, with that in mind, um, during that time, the uh, I think it's been like five or six months now, we have been releasing sort of privately only to our email subscribers, this little mini series that I call Notes from the Lab. And these are short form, like off the cuff kind of um, videos like this one where I'm speaking directly into my phone off the top of my head. There's not much planning or outlining that goes into it, not much editing. And I've been releasing several of these per week to our email subscribers. So I've decided that while I'm doing these bigger projects, we are going to start posting these publicly across all of our channels on YouTube, on podcast, Instagram, Facebook, and everywhere else that you see the Deep Game teachings. So what I'd like to know from you as we get set to launch this new series how many of these do you feel would benefit you per week? So a lot of players will, <laughs> like I, I got emails from players who said, I want to see these every day, do it, post a daily video. And I almost did that because um, these are quite easy for me to make. In reality, most players just can't absorb that much information and put it to use. Most people can't. I certainly can't. So um my, I've kind of fallen back on like two or three times per week is what I'm thinking, but post down below to let me know what frequency you feel you could actually put to use. And then also, if you have any topics or um, questions that you want me to have answered uh, here in this series, then let me know also in the comments so that I can put those in the queue because we're going to be doing these a lot more frequently. So I can probably actually uh, get to a lot of your questions here. And as you can see, these are like a lot more raw and unpolished and unscripted and well we actually never use scripts here uh, in any of the deep game videos but they're just a lot more um imperfect frankly <laughs> than um the classical you can see the set back there like the 4k camera and the, the lighting and the bookshelf and all of that um, all the stuff that you're used to seeing these are going to be a lot more raw and a lot more unpolished. And frankly, um, this gets into that deeper lesson and this personal reason why I, I want to do this beyond just freeing up my time for these bigger projects to happen. The personal reason <laughs> is because I have found myself um, swaying too far to the side of structure and perfection and um, trying to do everything just right with all of the deep game material. And what I've found over time, and we'll get into some basketball examples here, is that your best work, whether it's on the basketball court or in any aspect of your life, will be done at the balance point between structure and flow, okay? The balance point between structure and flow. And you can imagine this um, when you watch a player like Michael Jordan, especially late in his career. Late career MJ was like uh, mathematical poetry. <laughs> he was so precise and so exact and there was no wasted movement. The structure of his game was so well engineered that it really came across as a work of art. And yet he still had this spontaneous fluid creativity within that structure. And so it was this perfect balancing between structure and flow. And Kobe had the exact same thing. Most of the greatest athletes of all time have the exact same thing. You could even um, look at this as um, in a vertical jump, for example, the 
uh, most explosive athletes will have this perfect balance of um, strength and speed. The balance point between strength and speed is explosive power. And the more in balance these two things are, and the, the stronger each of them are individually, the more explosive the athlete will be. Whenever we get into being uh, too strong, but not fast enough, we become slow and clunky and uncoordinated. If we're too fast, but we have no strength, then we lack explosive power and um, just the like literally the raw horsepower to get ourselves off the ground. So it's always going to be this balance point whenever we're too structured and too focused on, um, you know, doing everything just right and the like technical fundamental details and the analytics of everything. Uh, if we're too much in that category, then we become rigid and inflexible and it creates this, um, for, uh, to use this word again, it creates rigidity in the mind and in the body and in our work. And so that's where I've found myself in, uh, with the deep game material over these last several months, I've found myself just kind of in this loop of trying to make everything just perfect, as perfect as it can possibly be and like pouring over my notes and um, over analyzing all of them and, and outlining and re outlining and, and calculating and just way, way, way too much overthinking and structure and, and frankly, just good old fashioned perfectionism has gone into it. So these uh, short little notes from the lab videos are going to be a practice for me to introduce more flow. And flow is more of the like spontaneous creativity where I'm speaking to you uh, in the moment as an idea comes to mind, I like pull out my phone and just start recording. And again, they're unpolished, they're um, a lot more raw, and yet they're so much more, um, uh, what's the word? They're, they're a lot more natural, right? Because I'm speaking spontaneously off the cuff. And so really cool stuff can come out that I wasn't even planning on before. And so this is a practice for me to introduce more flow because I've been too much on the structure side of things. And I will offer to you that if you are of that camp where you're, you're very structured and very analytical, maybe you tend to overthink things, maybe, um, you know, your, your game might feel a little bit robotic and, um, you know, not quite fluid enough introduce more flow into your training, into your life, and into your game. This might take the form of uh, one really good practice, actually, is that I recommend every player, but especially for players who are more in that structured side, go to the court twice per week and just play. <laughs> Whatever you feel like doing that day, go without an agenda, except for to enjoy the game of basketball. So completely non-structured, completely going with the flow and uh, seeing what happens. If there's a group of guys there that you want to play with, play with them. If you want to play like shadow ball one-on-one -on -one against yourself, do that like Kobe style. Um, if you have a, a certain like series of drills that you want to try out or a move that you're trying out, just do whatever you feel like. You might even, a, another good practice here is to actually uh, just put on whatever your favorite favorite music is and do freestyle dribbling to the rhythm of that music. Again, spontaneous creativity, unplanned, in the moment, uh, just allowing the rhythm of the game to move through you. These are really, really good practices if you are more on the side of structure, perfectionism, uh, over analysis, overthinking. Now, if you're on the other side, once again, the, the best work will be done at the balance point. So if, if you're on the other side and you're totally free flowing and, um, you know, you're more spontaneous and creative, but maybe a little bit disorganized and cluttered, um, if you have trouble, uh, you know, sequencing things properly and like sticking to a specific training program or any of that you may want to introduce some more structure. So this might take the form of like a morning and evening ritual of scheduling out your week and your days ahead of time and putting in just a little bit of structure and framework so that you can reach that balance point again. And uh, I, I wanna say this one more time just for emphasis, the best work and the best performance will come at that balance point. We see this like everywhere, um, you know, on earth, frankly, in every field. <laughs> we see this in nature even, where uh, bamboo is a perfect example. Bamboo is um, incredibly strong. You can build houses out of it. And yet, if 
uh, a bamboo branch, if there's wind blowing really strong, that bamboo can bend almost to the point where it's touching the ground without breaking. It's this perfect balance between structure, strength, and flow, flexibility, and adaptability. So find where you are on that continuum. And I think uh, as we wrap up here, I want to take you downstairs and actually share a piece of art that um, I personally really love. It's a, it's a perfect example of this. And again, the best art will be created at that balance point between structure and flow. So uh, let's head downstairs just to wrap this up. And I'll share one more example while we're walking down. The teams that typically win the NBA championship are the teams that don't just have the best offensive and de defensive sets and set plays and um, sequences that they run. They, they often have that. However, they're also <laughs> able to make, um, uh, they, they're able to adapt and adjust on the fly. So they're, again, that balance between structure and flow. And this piece of art, which was done by a really, really good friend of mine, is sort of an abstract representation of that principle. It's quite a big piece, as you can see. Um, it's really just uh, brilliant. You can see that all of these geometric patterns are like perfectly constructed and perfectly structured and interwoven in there is all of this creative expression, this spontaneous flow. And so it's, uh, again, very, very abstract, but it's this perfect representation. You can stare at this for hours and discover all of this little subtle nuance and the flow within the structure. And so I'll, po I'll pose that question to you one more time. What does your game need more? Do you need more structure or do you need more flow? Find where you are on that, continu on that continuum and give yourself the opposite, like I'm doing with these uh, notes from the lab videos. These are per purely flow. I am talking um, completely in the moment without an outline for you. Um, for somebody that is complete, like uh, just going with the flow all the time, they might need to introduce some outlines and some structure. So find where you are on the continuum and give yourself the opposite to bring yourself into balance. And that is the point at which you will do your best work and you will perform the best. So that's our first lesson in this Notes from the Lab series, but I'd love to know more uh, from you on what you want to see here. So comment down below if you have any topics, any questions, uh, any comments on the frequency at which you want to see these episodes be released. Let me know and uh, I'll go through those comments and we'll, we'll put something together. And again, this is going to be... Um, something that we adapt on the fly and it creates itself on the fly. And we've got um, some more bigger plans actually that I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, I, I don't want to do that now, but I'll share these uh, in some upcoming episodes. So keep an eye out for that. And the final thing that I'll say is, well, if you're not subscribed, um, you know, <laughs> If you're not subscribed to the Deep Game emails, then you've been missing out on like five or six months of these episodes here. So make sure that you're signed up for the Deep Game Masterclass at deepgame.com. You'll start receiving our emails and uh, there's all kinds of other stuff in those as well. It's not just these episodes. So make sure that you're subscribed there, receiving the emails, opening and clicking them. Um, for those who aren't opening and clicking those emails, our system automatically filters those out. So make sure that you're engaged there. That's a, a really, really good way to stay up to date. All right. So uh, welcome to the Notes from the Lab series. I cannot wait to share this with you. And uh, like I said, it's been sort of uncomfortable actually bringing myself to come back to that balance point and introduce some more flow. But now that we're doing it, uh, it feels pretty good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the next one. Comment down below to let me know what you think, and I will see you then.